Top story this morning, the Blazers Yusuf Nurkic is out for the rest of the season after a gruesome injury at Moda Center. He went down hard in double overtime last night, breaking his leg. Now the rest of the team and the Blazers fans are sending Nurk messages of support. Yeah, Christine Pitawanic is tracking all of this this morning. Christine, before this all happened, he was playing a great game last night. Nina, Brenda, yeah, he helped the Blazers clinch a playoff spot after beating the Nets last night in double overtime. But then everything came to a screeching halt. A rep for the Blazers tells us he has compound fractures to his left tibia and fibula. Basically, he broke his leg and is out indefinitely, but his injury last night really a gruesome one. And you know, when we talk about a compound fracture, it means the bone comes through the skin. Fortunately, you know, we didn't see that part in the video, but we're still deciding not to show you because it still makes your stomach turn. Nurkic was jumping up for a rebound when he came down really awkwardly on another player. His leg broke right when he hit the ground. Despite the win against the Nets, both his teammates and fans somber after the game. And I looked and I saw his uh, his leg and uh, I was just like, I just hate to see that happen to him. It was just a combination of grossed out and mostly felt bad. Like I was grossed out because I saw the way his leg was bending and like I played sports so I know how injuries go and that's an injury that's going to take you out for such a long time. Nurkic was carried off the court in a stretcher, obviously in pain, and was taken to the hospital. Coach Terry Stotts called the injury devastating. But here's what fans are saying on social media. Alonzo says Nurkic will be back soon. Look at Paul George or Gordon Hayward. They came back stronger. Debbie says, Rip City will be here waiting for your return. You are the heart of this team. <laughs> and right now, our hearts are broken. And what makes you even more sad is that a lot of people say, gosh, he was playing such a good year. I mean, this is one of the best, if not the best, of his career. He's so. only 24 years old. Too, yeah. So yeah. he's got a lot of time left. Paul George had this exact same injury. He was much older when it happened. Mm -hmm. And he's playing back again. Great basketball. So we're thinking about him. But you think of, like, just the way his foot kind of landed. He's Ugh. seven feet tall and, and 280. 280 pounds. Yeah. That's a lot of, you know, pounds coming down and just to see that injury. But yeah, he's being credited for um, really helping the Blazers last night, though, before that injury. 32 points, 16 rebounds, something like him. that. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it'll give him some new motivation in the playoffs. I mean, they're playing for Nurk at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this has happened to us so many times, right, Rip City? We get a good season going, and then one of our key players yeah goes down. This is a list from uh, La Murray. He works for ESPN of just all the Blazers players in history that have had public leg injuries, um, like season ending injuries. Bill Walton, Michael Thompson, Sam Bowie, Greg Oden. We all know that one. And now Yusuf Nurkic. Uh, obviously, we had Brandon Roy with, you know, knee problems. Um, so just another blow to Rip City. And, you know, we got the playoffs yeah. and now this happens. So we're praying for his uh, swift recovery and fast return. So thank you, Christine. We're tracking this story throughout the morning here on Sunrise. Coming up next half hour, we will hear from the Blazers themselves reacting to Nurk's injury. Right now at 6.05. Today, the man charged with murdering Rainier's police chief eight years ago is expected to change his plea to guilty. Daniel Butts is also scheduled to be sentenced. Investigators say he was trying to steal a hot rod from a stereo shop in 2011 and ended up shooting police chief Ralph Painter during a confrontation. Last year, a judge found Butts competent to stand trial. He suffers from schizophrenia and has been in the state psychiatric hospital since that shooting. Now to Hillsboro, where a woman is dead after a fire broke out at the Bendemeer Court Apartments. That fire happened at 5.30 last night. Neighbors tell us the victim was an elderly woman who lived alone. Police are investigating it as suspicious. If you have information, call Hillsboro Police. In Washington, D.C., a new fight is brewing over when Congress and the American people will be able to see the full Mueller report. Democrats say they want it released a week from today on April 2nd. Attorney General William Barr says it could take weeks to redact classified information from that report. Right now, only a four-page summary written by Barr is available. In that, Barr says the report did not show sufficient evidence to proceed with obstruction of justice charges against the president. 
606 now, time for your morning headlines. In your national headlines, the Pentagon is authorizing up to a billion dollars to begin work on 57 miles of fence along the border with Mexico. The 18-foot high fence will be in Yuma, Arizona and El Paso, Texas. Acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan says this will help block what he calls drug smuggling corridors. Representatives in the U.S. House will vote today to override President Trump's veto. Earlier this month, the president vetoed a bipartisan resolution which rejects his emergency declaration at the border. There is not enough support to override the president's veto yet. The attorney who represented adult film star Stormy Daniels in her legal battle against the president was arrested yesterday. Michael Avenatti is accused of attempting to extort $20 million from Nike. On top of that, prosecutors are charging him with wire and bank fraud. Apple is unveiling its high Highly anticipated video streaming service, Apple TV Plus. The new ad free service will be available in the fall, featuring original shows and movies. They've already got those big names. You saw Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, even Oprah attached. It is coming up on 608. Okay, you guys, whether you love them or you hate them, scooters could be back on Portland streets a month from today. A second pilot program starts April 26th and will last a full year. So we want to hear from you. Are you excited about e-scooters returning? This time around, there are some new rules for riders. People who illegally ride on the sidewalks could face a fine or be banned from using the scooters. The companies will also have a financial incentive to expand services farther out into places like East Portland. Peabot says if the new rules are followed, there could be as many as 9,000 scooters operating in Portland by next year. But again, we want to know what you think. Are you excited about e-scooters returning? So far, 93% of you say a no. You can still weigh in. You can vote by going to kgw.com slash vote or by clicking on the Vote Now tab in our KGW News app. Well,